uh, any diagonals clip by any player. Yeah, you want to leave it as that. And the condition, however, this is where we get specific. Say comparison, and we want to do uh, where is it? Dialog. Use dialog item returns the dialog item that is used, and you can see in the events here, it says launches event when an item is used. So we know it has to be used dialog item equals equals to our camera refresh dialog button. And if you had a dialog but a dialog with multiple buttons, you would just make this an array of the number of buttons, and then in here you would set camera refresh dialog button zero to be this, and then camera refresh dialog button one to be the second button, and camera refresh dialog button two to be the third, and then in here you and then in here you could check conditions if it's if its number was zero, do this; if it's number one, do that. But for this, I'm just having a simple one button thing because that's all we need. Um, and anyways, so that's all we need to check. And let's go to new action. Actually, we don't need to do new action. We, we can just copy our camera code. Fix the camera. Um, yeah, that's good. That should be good at least. We'll find out in a bit, as always. And uh, what else did I say I was going to do for this tutorial? I did lighting, did locking. Oh, I was going to do a cinematic. Um, let me just test this first. Okay, we're in game here. Uh, we have our fixed camera dialog. That's good, and it looks like the button's fitting in there pretty well. Um, my game is running pretty slow right now because I got a lot of stuff going. And as you can see, our camera is following nicely. Um, if I wasn't at such low frames per second right now, um, it wouldn't be so choppy. Now it's nice and smooth out here. So you can see the pathing we painted. I can't go in here like this. And this is the problem. I can't actually do anything with my camera right now except this bug right here. If I click that, it bugged out. It's bugging out because it's not doing that. So, you, so we added this fixed camera. So when I click it, it comes back on, and now it works nicely. So I mean, that's the only fix I've really found for this right now. Um, anyways, this is our little town. Looks pretty cool. Pretty eerie if you had like a close-up sort of zombie game or something. You have this creepy city. And uh, let's go see these buildings here. The biodome that we placed. And yeah, you can see that it'll fix the camera and go right to our guy. Um, so let's do an opening cinematic. So the first thing we need for... This is going to be a pretty quick cinematic, by the way. The first thing we need for the cinematic is a camera to use. So let's go to layer cameras. And then, so I'm control right, I'm control right dragging right now to do this. And then I'm going to wheel in the mouse wheel. And then I'm holding right mouse to move here. And then Alt and hold right mouse, and you can go down. And Control right drag, and then here. So we're here. And then Control right drag, Alt right drag. Okay. Um, one thing I've found with doing cameras is that if I, in the editor, if I place the camera here in game, it appears like up here for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so I'm going to do this down here. Create camera and set camera to current view. So now camera one is there, and then. Camera two. Is going to be maybe up like this. And maybe zoom out a bit and create camera. Set camera to current view. So now you can see camera one is down here. Camera two is over here. And the simple cinematic is just going to be going from camera one to uh, camera two. Um, and then it'll, I don't know, maybe fade into the, it'll cut out into the game camera or something like that. Um, so we've got our cameras. Let's go to trigger editor. So in our Emily initialization, let's do a new action camera. Apply camera object. Apply, I don't know, camera one. And for player one over zero, because we want we want it to start out like this, at one hundred percent, zero percent and include the target. You always want to do include the target, otherwise it ends up somewhere weird on the map. And then we want to um, actually we want to go to cinematics, cinematic mode, so it'll hide the interface for all players over immediate. And then okay, what else can we do in cinematics? We can fade out. Let's let's have it start out black and then kind of fade in. Uh, that's good. Don't wait. I didn't really have to do this since it's zero, but whatever. Um, and then let's copy this. And then apply, let's apply camera two. For player one over, I don't know, 
10 seconds with 70% so it doesn't go full speed right ahead and maybe 12% deceleration so it kind of does a nice slow at the end. And then let's do a new action general wait. Let's wait though those 10 seconds and I don't know, uh, let's make it 10 uh, real time seconds because I don't know if, I don't know what this time is based on here, I don't know what, if it's game time or real time because in faster game mode real time will go a lot slower so we're being safe by putting 10 real time seconds here. Uh, actually I better just go game time. And that way, if this happens to be game time, it'll correspond nicely. But if not, then we'll be cut off a bit. But whatever. Um, and then so, and then after this, what do we want to do? Oh, we want to fade in too. Don't forget fade in. So now we want. Otherwise, we'll just have a black screen. Um, so we just want to fade in over. I don't know, three, four seconds. So it'll fade in, and then once it's faded in, it'll still be moving the camera nicely. And then ten seconds later, it'll hit this mark here, and then it'll do this crap. So. Uh, Why don't we make this have a little delay too, so it kind of smooths into it nicely. 35% maybe. And uh, one thing else we want to do here is camera. We want to go back to our default camera. Over, did I, would I make it two? Yeah, so we want to do that two. I don't know. This this seems interesting. Um, so it'll do a bit of that, and then we want to turn cinematic mode off. Otherwise, the player can't even play. Turn cinematic mode off. And I'm doing this on the spot, so I don't know how this will turn out uh, in game. That's that's the thing about cinematics is you do all these triggers, planning everything out, and then you go in game. And you think, oh, this doesn't really look that good. So then you have to go back and play with the values a bit. But it doesn't take too long, so it's not too bad. And why don't we go ahead and do this and see what happens? Okay, our screen's black, and now it's kind of it's kind of blending into that other camera a bit quickly and a bit laggy because my frames per second is low right now. But it would be normally really smooth. And there we go. So it did our cinematic, and then went to the second camera. And when it hit it, it uh, did our last thing, which was go to this camera. And now we have our little regular game. So you could do kind of an opening cinematic. Maybe you could order this unit to kind of move along with the camera from point to point. Um, you can see how I did unit ordering from my tower defense tutorial. Um, so you could like have this guy start out here and have the camera kind of travel up as it did but have him move to this point and then when he stops time it so that when he stops here the camera goes into your game camera and you can play um, that might be an interesting way of doing an opening not really necessary but you can think of uh, ways of making a cool map like that um, so anyways that concludes this tutorial it was pretty simple just doing uh, some cool lighting um, some camera movement and stuff like that. So uh, I hope this helps people and thanks for watching.